Hey guys, so today I'm going to be reading chapter 21 of Where the Mountain Meets the Moon. If you haven't seen chapter 20 yet, I'll link it in the description down below. Um, I'm sorry I haven't been posting frequently, I've just been really busy lately, but I promise you I will finish this book and just comment down below what other books you want me to read because I'll be willing to read them. So let's get started. Chapter 21 Minley and the Buffalo Boy pushed through the crowd as the sun burned the top of their heads. Minley used the spare harvests of her village, couldn't help gapping at the tall mountains, tall mounds of food for sale at the market of green abundance. The street and open courtyard were filled with umbrella-covered stands and stalls, flaunting jade-colored cabbages, curled cucumbers, purple eggplants, and tangy oranges. Glossy sugared hawthorn berries, like rubies on a stick, made Minley's mouth water. I don't see the king anywhere, Minley said. Well, maybe he's not here yet, the buffalo said. The buffalo boy said. I don't know if I'll find him here, Minley said. Now, in the daylight, the buffalo boy's friend didn't seem as ex extraordinary. What would the king be doing at the street market anyway? She said he. She said he'd better be here, so he will. The buffalo. Bu the buffalo boy said. His mouth making a stubborn line. Hey, get away from that, a vendor yelled as the buffalo attempted to eat frosty green lettuce. The buffalo boy quickly pulled him away. Get your buffalo out of here, the vendor shouted, as red as red faced as the radishes he was selling. I better take him away, the buffalo boy said, pulling the buffalo's head away from the arrays of tempting food. He's hungry. I should take him to, to pasture. I'll stay here, Minley said. You don't need to look for the king with me. Okay, the boy said. If you need a place to stay tonight, you know where my hut is. If not, maybe I'll see you around. Good luck. Thanks, Minley said. But as he carelessly waved goodbye, she realized that she might not see him again. Before he disappeared from sight, she grabbed the last coin out of her bag and ran to him. Wait, Minley said. Here, take this. No, the boy laughed. I don't need that. You keep it. But, Minley started... But he had already turned around. Goodbye, she heard him call, and the buffalo bo and the buffalo snorted as a farewell as well. Minley smiled wryly to herself. Now what? Minley thought as she wa wandered past stalls, le weaving around mer merchants and customers. How am I supposed to find the king here? Please spare a piece of fruit for an old man. A voice creaked. Minley turned around and saw a wrinkled, poor man begging a at a peach stand. He was dirty and bent, and his clothes looked as if they were made from, from rags used to wash floors. Please, he begged the peach vendor. I'm so thirsty. One small peach. Your smallest? Go away, old man, the fat vendor said. No money, no peach. Please, the beggar, the beggar said again, weakly. Pity a tired old man. Get away from here, you worthless beggar, the vendor spat out, or I'll call the guards on you. The vendor's loud voice had attracted attention from passerby, passerby, and the small crowd began to form in front of the peach stand. It's disgraceful to treat an old man like that, someone murmured. Just give him a peach. All of you are generous with my property, the vendor glared at the crowd. If you, are, if you care so much, buy him a peach. As Minley watched the beggar's hand outstretched and shaking with hunger, she felt a sharp pang inside of her. It reminded her of Ba, reaching out with his last chopsticks full of rice for a fish. The copper coin she had offered to the buffalo boy was warm in her hand. She could almost hear her heart beating against the round edges. Here, she said, handing the vendor the coin. Then she picked the largest peach on the stand and handed it to the old man. He bowed to her gratefully and eagerly ate the peach, forgetting about the inner city and the palace for a moment. Minley watched him. In fact, as if under a spell, the whole crowd stood and watched him swallow the fruit until he held the peach pit in his hand. Thank you, the beggar said in a mouth stronger, in a much stronger voice. He and he bowed to the onlooking people. The peach was so delicious. I wish for all of you to be able to taste it. If you would humor an old man and stay a little while, I'll share my good fortune. The old man took a small stick out of his pocket and bent down, and in the dirt next to the black bricks. He dug a small hole and planted his peach pit. He stuck his stick upright in the little mound and then asked for water. Min Lee, now completely fascinated, took out her water jug and handed it to him. As he poured water into his stick, 
he tr it trembled. And was she imagining it? It seemed to grow. And it was moving. And it was, oh, sorry. And it was growing. The stick grew higher and higher and thicker and thicker until it was the width of Minley's arm. When she could no longer see the top of it, pink flowers and branches began to blossom out of it. As the sweet scent of flowers filled the air, Minley realized the stick had become a peach tree. The crowd of people seemed to realize this too, as they all gapped at it open mouth mouthed. Even the stingy the stingy the stingy vendor left his fruit stand to stare in awe. The pink snow like the pink snow, the petals fell from the tree and made a soft carpet on the dirt. Green leaves sprouted, and as they cascaded over the branches, pale moon-colored balls like pearls developed, almost as if they were small balloons being blown in it with air. They grew into round fruit, blushing pink and red as they developed. Soon, the tree was heavy with them, and the air was full of the enchantment of the, the enchanted smell of ripe peaches. Children gathered around and stared longly at the luscious fruit, while the adults gulped with their mouths watering. Finally, the old man reached up, plucked a peach from the tree, and handed it to one of the people in the crowd. Please, he said, waving his hand, help yourself. The crowd needed no other urging. Young children climbed the tree and passed down the fruit, while the taller adults simply stretched and grabbed them. A boy with a tired horse, cl horse climbed onto his back and reached an especially red peach that called him. Before long enough, everyone's mouth were full of soft, sweet peach flesh and groans of delight. Even the peach vendors in this stand forgotten stood under the tree with his eyes closed contentedly and the peach juice dribbling out of his mouth. Min Lee, however, didn't join the feast of, pe feast of peaches. If I hadn't been eating peaches all the way in the city, Min Lee said to herself, I'd be the first one climbing the tree. But as she slightly tried to... But as she was slightly tired of peaches, Minley saw that no one else did. She noticed that every time someone plucked a peach from the tree, a peach from the fruit tree stand disappeared. The beggar is using the vendor's peaches for his tree. Minley laughed to herself as she glanced at him through the fruit-eating crowd. He was watching him, an amused look, and suddenly Minley saw the beggar wasn't really that old at all. He must be a magician. Maybe you can help me get to the inner city? Minley edged toward him. As she weaved her way to him, the last peach was picked from the tree, and the leaves and branches began to disappear. The tree trunk, trunk seemed to shrivel into itself and grew thinner and shorter. The crowd had finished their peaches, and the ground was littered with peach pits. When Minley finally reached the beggar, the tiny twig of peach tree vanished un underneath the pile of peach pits, and the beggar was turning to leave. leave. Wait, Minley said, and grabbed his arm. However, as Minley took hold of his leave, sleeve, it pulled back and a giant glint of gold shone. Hastily, the beggar pushed back his sleeve, but the quick glance was enough for Minley to see that he wore a gold bracelet in the shape of a dragon. They stared at each other. As Minley quick thinking mind sum somersaulted, the only imperial family is allowed to use the image of the dragon. Dragon had said, Everyone knows a golden dragon is always and only worn by kings, said the buffalo boy. The words washed in her mind, and Minley could secretly breathe. You're wearing a dragon, Minley gasped. Only the is allowed to wear a golden dragon. You must be, you must be. Where's that beggar? A loud angry sh shout cut through the chaos. Minley recognized the vendor's vo voice. He stole my peaches. I'll get him. Quickly, the beggar shook off Minley from his arm and began to run. She, start, she stared in shock as she finished her se sentence. You must be, Minley w whispered to the ragged dis disappearing figure, the king. All right, guys, that was the end of chapter 21. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give this video a like, subscribe down below, and stay tuned for chapter 22. Bye!